this is the plaintiff, Michael Little. He says the defendant is his fiancé's cousin, and he did work renovating her bar and restaurant and hasn't been paid. That's right, the defendant isn't treating him like family. She owes him $5,000 for all the labor and work he did for her, and he has no other choice but to sue her for the money he's definitely owed. This is the defendant, Leela Johnson. She says the plaintiff volunteered to do the renovations and there was never any talk about him being paid for it. The guy was bored and out of work. He told her he liked working with his hands to keep busy. And now that COVID has hit and he can't find work, he's trying to sue her for money she simply doesn't owe him. She's accused of getting something for nothing. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says he renovated the defendant's bar and she will not pay him for all the hard work that he did. But the defendant says the plaintiff volunteered to do some of the renovations because he was bored and out of work. It's the case of something or nothing. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Little, you are suing Ms. Johnson and her bar, the Boilermaker Restaurant and Bar for $1,470 yes. in labor that you say she owes you, plus $3,530 in pain and suffering. Um, first, I'd like to ask you, Ms. Johnson, tell me about the Boilermaker. What kind of place is it? It's a restaurant bar. And where is it? Located in Lima, Ohio. And what, what's the vibe of this restaurant bar? Well, it's partly nightclub. We sell food. Uh, we're usually open till 2.30 at least before the pandemic. Also have entertainment, DJs. It seats approximately 250 people. Okay, wow, all right. And uh, how long have you owned it? It's been in my family for 50 years. My parents opened it in 1970. Wow, that's something. All right, um, now let's talk to you, Mr. Little. At some point in the last several years, you speak with Ms. Johnson, and according to you, what is the deal or arrangement that you folks arrive at? Well, I actually was the bar manager. She asked me to be her bar manager. I've been a local DJ here in Lima for 15 years. So as the bar manager, I incorporated my DJ skills as well as my culinary skills because we do sell food. And I took on the task of managing the bar. But before and the I restaurant managed, too. Yes, at times I was the singing DJ, which I ran karaoke. I bartended, and I cooked the food all by myself. I mean, it had become okay. a, a nice deal. It it increased the volume of business that she was getting. The boilermaker haven't gotten steady business in years. So by us incorporating her bar and my skills, we were able to generate more funds. And But I told her that she wasn't using the full bar. She was only using one part of the bar. There's actually three parts to the bar. But the other two parts she was not using because the floor had caved in in one side as well as the back. And the back had also had um, a leaking roof and paneling that needed to be put up so it can be completed. I told her that if she bought the materials, that I would do the work with my own hands and as the bar picked up and made money, then she can consider paying me for the work that I had done. So while I was doing the work, before I even completed the first project, well, which was the second project because I had renovated the female bathroom first, but while I was renovating the flooring in what is called the sunset room, she came to me one day and she told me that she had the idea that she would turn over the liquor license to me because she was tired of being in the business and by December she was planning on retiring. And she said at that point she would turn it over to me under a manager's agreement. And I never asked for What's that. a manager's that agreement? Was, what is a manager's agreement? The manager's agreement where I would take over and I would actually run the bar. It would still be, she would still own the bar, but I would run the bar and take so um, responsibility of the bar under the manager's agreement and maybe down the line, she would turn the bar over to me totally and completely. Was any of this As in writing? Started, well, she had put together a contract and we had discussed it, but I told her that I didn't 
find that contract to be sufficient because in the very first two lines, it said, this is not to be used against me in court. So I told her that we would have to renegotiate <laughs> that contract because due to those lines, why would you sign anything that can't be used against you in court? So we continue. Can I ask you a question? Was, so wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So if this is the arrangement that you're arriving at and you're going to put all this blood, sweat and tears into it, did you renegotiate the contract or did you just work without a contract? Yes, we, we, we negotiated. We talked as it went on. I mean, no, I'm not talking about verbal. Listen to what I'm asking. I'm asking you. You didn't want to sign what she presented in writing. So did you come up with something else in writing? Yes, we discussed it, but we never actually got to the point in which we. So were the, able that's to not yes. Then that answers no. No, nothing else was in writing. That's the answer. All right. So, mm -hmm. um, but you're putting your blood, sweat, and tears into it because you think one day you may end up owning it, and you're managing the yes. place now. Are you getting paid? Are you getting paid a salary? I know it's under the table. Are you getting paid a salary under the table? Yes, it was a percentage. It's, it's just between us. It's just between us, right? <laughs> So you were getting paid for your services, but you feel that you are owed more because you are upset now that this manager's agreement, which was kind of just a handshake between you two, according to you, isn't being honored. What ends up happening and how long are you there and managing things until you feel that she was pushing you out? How many months were you, you know, putting your blood, sweat and tears into this place before she, according to you, pushed you out? A whole year. You know, she didn't push me out until okay. the COVID pandemic came into play. Okay. All right. So let me talk to you, Ms. Johnson. Um, did you have some kind of agreement with him, verbal agreement, that you may pass the business on to him at some point in order to entice him to spend a heck of a lot more time there doing things for you than he should have? No. That conversation didn't take place until that work was completely done. And... It was a year prior to that that he came to me and asked me to teach him how to run a bar. He asked me. Then I told him. When things started to slow down, because I told him, I said, I really don't have anything for you to do now. But when things started to slow down, I told him, like, do you still want to learn how to run a bar? And he said, yes. We never had any conversation about that work that he did until... The pandemic came on and he wasn't able to get any money. And then that's when he started saying, you got everything. I don't have anything. So we never had a conversation okay. like what he's telling you that we had. And yes, I did write I, something up. But when it wasn't did that run, can I ask you a question? When did that renovation take place that he's talking about? In essence, he's suing about so that it, renovation and paying there, himself. When he first came, when he first came. Which is when? Approximately a year ago, March. He did do a lot of renovation, right? It wasn't a well, lot. what was it? Now listen, here's what, what he was, said. No, you me. listen. What was it? I'm sorry, stop. What was it that he did? The floor wasn't caving in, but there was some loose boards, and he took them up and put more down, Okay. He repaired the so-called women's restroom, which there's a big lump on the floor, which I had a customer that went in there and fell and hit her head because the floor wasn't level. And there's water leaking underneath. He painted the room. He did work. I'm not going to say he didn't do it, but I never forced him right. out, and he's lying about that. Okay, hold on one second, and let's talk about something. According to you, the floor's not level, and there's a big bubble, and a customer hit her head, and there's water leaking, Et cetera, et cetera. Do you have any evidence of that? Do you have any pictures or anything to show me? I sent a picture of the toilet. I don't know if it shows where there's a bucket at the back of the toilet. There's the bucket in the back. See around the toilet? That says floor it's cleaner. All coming up. Okay. That's, that's, Let me ask you a question, Mr. Little. You're suing for $1,470 for renovations that you did. She's saying they weren't that good. I'm not sure these pictures prove that, but what I'd like to know from you is, do you have any evidence to suggest that she agreed at any point to pay you this $1,470? I know you don't have a written contract, but do you have a text or an email or anything else? Uh, any witnesses to the transaction where she agreed, I'll pay you $1,470? Yes, I sent text messages to... Um... I could. Yeah, I, I read them. Phone. I read text messages between the two of you for two years. I don't see something that says specifically that you owe me $1,470. I do see text messages where you are 
you're all over the bar. I mean, you are really hands-on taking care of things where you feel very hurt because you feel like she pushed you out. I also see, frankly, Ms. Johnson, texts where he says, can you pay me some of the money that you owe me? Are you able? This is, these are your words in text. Are you able? This is March, once COVID hit. Take a look at this text. Are you able to set me straight with any of the money you owe me? Answer, no, but you will get it. You are standing here in your defense and saying, I don't owe him anything. He did it all of his own free will. Why on earth then, on March 23rd, would you answer in a text, no, but you will get it? Because that's in two, that's a whole year later when he started asking me for yeah. money. Do you owe him money, yes or no? I don't think I do. I was just giving it to him because he explained to me well, that he didn't have any money. I don't know about that because his text to you is not, can I have a handout? His text to you is, are you able to set me straight with any of the money you owe me? And your answer isn't, I don't owe you any money. What are you talking about? Your answer is, no, but you will get it. So I want to know, what like did you then agree? Okay, what did you agree to pay him? I agreed to pay him the fourteen seventy five when I got it. Okay. Now can Tell I me that, Ms. Johnson, yes, I want to know what went wrong in this... Um, you had talked to him about training him in the business and everything else. Was it ever really your intention to either pass along the business to him or just make him a good bar manager? And what do you think uh, went wrong with that relationship? My intentions was to turn the business over to him, but it wasn't happening fast enough for him. And he was going in my building when he wasn't supposed to be in there, calling me on Sundays when I'm not open on Sunday and he's in there and can't get in the cash register. He was running totals, trying to find out how much money I made, all kinds of stuff. And I just told him it wasn't none of his business. But in the beginning of that transaction, if you'll let me explain, I told him then that I did not want him to do the work that I had a person, a maintenance man that did my work. He said, why pay him when I can do it? And I said, well, you know, I don't really have it. He goes, well, if you don't have the money, I'll go buy the materials and do it myself. If you don't let me do it, I'm going to do it anyway. So he more or less twisted my arm. You're going to twist my arm and then now tell me I owe you? I'm telling you what happened. And there was... I, you know, I the thing is, this. I don't think you guys disagree that much. I don't think that he's saying you owed me that money back then. I think he's saying I let it go because I didn't. I really, we were building this thing together, and I feel like we were building a thing together. The problem that we have, Mr. Little, is that, you know, in Ms. Johnson's head, I don't think she was using you either. I think in Ms. Johnson's head, this may happen at some, would have happened at some point, but she wasn't ready to hand you the business and let you go in the till and let you, you know, figure out what she makes and whether she's paying you enough and everything else. In her mind, this was steps down the road. And in your mind, um, it wasn't, you know, like, where is it, you know? But the problem that you have is, and, and you're not, you have to understand too, Ms. Johnson, Mr. Little re recognizes a problem that he has. He doesn't have a contract in writing with you. He can't prove it wasn't happening fast enough. He's not suing you for any of that. There's nothing about his hanging around there all the darn time and his giving you his blood, sweat, and tears. He's not suing you for a stitch of that. What he's suing you for is the 1470, which you're telling me you had agreed eventually a year later to pay him, um, and all this money and pain and suffering. What is the pain and suffering? My pain and suffering is the fact that I was hurt because she knew I didn't have income. Now, she was still open doing carryouts. She could have let me work doing a carryout. She chose to just let me be without an income. Can I say something and comment to what he just said? Yes, go ahead. He's lying. Yes. I called him. Okay. I called him. I said, give me a week to see if the orders are going to start coming in because this is all new. I don't know how it's going to work. I said, I'll call you back in a week if I start getting orders and then you can come and cook and I'll do the deliveries. I called him back or text him back, whichever way it went, I can't remember. And he said, oh no. You're going to have to pay me top dollar before I come down and do anything for you. And I said, okay. I called that a quit. 
And that's the reason why I did It is that. such a so shame. I told him, I said, because I, yeah, Ms. Johnson and Mr. Little, it is such a shame that you two don't get along anymore. Um, I know that you, your girlfriend is family. Do you guys see each other at functions or no? You don't even see each other anymore. No. What a shame. But here's the thing, Mr. Little. You're suing for thirty-five, thirty in pain and suffering to get you to the $5,000 max. And I don't think you've described pain and suffering. I think you had a business, a kind of a, a, a loose verbal business understanding with someone. Um, and this is why loose verbal business understandings don't really work. Things should be in writing so that everybody, everybody understands their rights and obligations. Um, so that we don't get into a situation where she thinks you're stepping all over her owner's toes and you feel that you're getting um, short shrift of the deal. So, but I am going to, or that's not pain and suffering. So but I am going to order for uh, judgment in your favor in the amount of the 1470 which eventually Ms. Johnson agreed she agreed to pay you. So my judgment is in your favor in the amount of the $1,470. Verdict for the plaintiff, and I wish you all good luck. Thank you. So the plaintiff prevails on his suit for $1,470. Ms. Johnson, number one, what do you think about the, the judge's verdict? You, you're going to have to pay him after all. What do you think about that? I'm not happy about it, but it's no big deal. The thing about it is, if he'd have waited, I would have gave it to him anyway. Sounds to me like, like he was a pretty good employee. He was doing a lot of stuff for you, running the bar, cooking food. He was a DJ. You don't find many people do all those things all wrapped into one, you know? He wasn't cooking. He was warming things up that I already prepared. I did all the prepping. All right. Well, I guess you're, you're, not, you're not missing him too much right now. Anyway, Mr. Little, let me ask you. Do you, did you think hard about suing her? Did you think if you sued her, you may never get your job back? Which probably is truth. What do you um, think? It was a no-brainer. I mean, the job was down the drain. It is what it is. All right. Well, I hope you find another job somewhere and that things get better. Okay? Good luck to you. Thank you. And with that, let us join the judges now in another session of After the Verdict. In this case, you had a lawsuit uh, over really about $1,500, $1,470, but the plaintiff had thrown kind of a kitchen sink complaint in there asking for pain and suffering to round it out to a really big number. Everything on oral contract effectively on the plaintiff's claim, uh, that's the kind of thing that keeps small claims court judges in business. Exactly. Oral, oral contracts. <laughs> exactly. Right? So that there can be a contest about what the actual facts are. but. Um, you know, in the end, it all just boiled down to the repair because he knows he can't right. enforce anything else. Everything right. else was his hopes and his dreams. Right. I think he was really hurt because I think he put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into the place um, with the idea that one day it would pay off. Right. And I got to say, the Boilermaker sounds like my kind of place. Yes, it, it does. Really, just the kinda, name alone. I like it. It's <laughs> gritty. When I was a kid, a Boilermaker was a shot and a beer. And you could get it for under two bucks in, in my, part of the, my part of the world. A so. buffalo. Exactly. So. Yeah, and you know, it, it's kind of, I hope that when all is said and done and this pandemic is over, that those kind of bars can come back into, into life. Oh, from because, your lips to God's ears. Man. Because yeah. there are so many people hurting who are running them. Right. And there are so many people hurting who miss them. Right. And would like to get back to them. You know? Amen. So if you're in that part of Ohio, please go to the Boilermaker, <laughs> all right? And have some food and have a few drinks. My landlord won't fix my air conditioning, and it's a heat wave. I bought a new air conditioner. Can I deduct the cost from the rent? Great question. Uh, you are entitled to live in a place that has the utilities that you paid for. If the landlord didn't fix the air conditioning with a reasonable amount of time, there are some states where you can either fix it or buy another air conditioner and deduct the rent. <laughs>